he married a man making $3.85 an hour. <laughs> what does that? So I'm watching this episode on YouTube with Kendra G. My sister-in-law sent me this video and she was like, I think you should take a look at this. And when I seen the title about a husband, about a woman marrying a man making $3.85 an hour, I said, let me get into this because I know that there were some things that Tyler Perry said a couple of weeks ago about the man putting something on the light bill or whenever he can take her out to eat or something like that. And black women making more money and people came for Tyler Perry. But I actually cited with Tyler Perry. I understood where he was coming from. But in this video in particular from Kendra G is a perfect example of what Tyler Perry was speaking about. Here it is. This couple is married for 37 years, right? 37 years. Now, I know a lot of y'all going to say, oh, my God, 37 years. I don't have 37 years to wait for this man to become everything that he's supposed to be. Now, here it is. They're millionaires now. So it's not about just this quick wealth. I, I I get it that we live in this microwave society where we want everything done. I remember back in the day, and I talked about this before, and I guess I'm telling my age, but there were times when we actually fixed things, when things were broken, if we had a broken chain on our bike or whatever, whatever it was, we fixed it. And we did the best that we could to keep this thing as long as we could because we understood the value. But today, and I've seen this numerous times where if something breaks, we just order it on Amazon. We just get it again. So we just throw the thing away and just go get a new one. Right. And don't work with what we already have. And I believe relationships are the same way. A lot of times we want people that's a, a finished product. We will never be a finished product. There's always work to be done. I want to talk about this video a little bit more in depth because when I was listening to the couple talk on Kendra G episode, I said, there's some things that I want to take away that I want to share with you all. The wife said the things that she liked about her husband was he was funny and he treated her very well. And she said he had character. I like that she said these three things because, again, we are looking at how much money someone can make because we want to look good for the gram or we just want to live this lifestyle of, of rock stars and rappers and, and, and things like that. But if you look at it, she fell in love with who he is as a man. She said he had a dream. And she knew that he wanted to do something. He, he had a bigger vision in mind. But even though that dream didn't materialize yet, she still had the character in the man. She still had what she desired. Because here's the thing. Money come and goes. So just as, as fast as you can get it is as fast as you can spend it. And if any of you know, if you've been making money for any amount of time, you know that money comes and ebbs and flows. And it's not how much you make, it's how much you spend. Because I, I would even ask people while dating about spending habits. How do you feel about saving? Are you a saver? Are you a spender? See, these kind of things are going to throw up the red flag if they're like, I just want to ball out this whole thing. And I know you want to look good. I know you want to smell good. I get it. We all, we all deserve nice things in life. But those very things can come back to haunt you in the long run because you can make six figures. And this couple, are they're millionaires. You can make six figures and still live paycheck to paycheck and still be broke. <clears throat> so it's not how much you make, but it's how much you spend. And the thing about this couple was when they first married, she was the breadwinner. And I don't know how their dynamic actually worked in their house on a day to day basis. They didn't share all of that information. But going into the marriage with her making uh, being a breadwinner, I know that possibly could have caused some tension, but it probably even encouraged him to step his game up. Who knows? I would even like to interview this the couple on my on my show because I would love to speak with them about some more things in detail. 
But she talked about him being a dreamer. And I know it's hard to say that you want to be with somebody that's a dreamer because in this day and age, people say what they're going to do and they don't stick to it. So I get it. But at the same time, it's good to be with someone who, who have a dream, who aspire to do more. But think about this. You can find out a lot about a person by their work ethic. And I think that's something that we overlook, too, because you can make a lot of money, but you can be in and out of jobs. So that's another dynamic you have to look at. So. So here they are making millions of dollars. I know everyone is asking, what does he do for a living? He said that he sells insurance and that he makes six figures a month. And so the thing about being a dreamer is. You can find out a lot about that person simply by looking at what they built. What is what 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 is it the last thing that they completed? What did they finish? If they are a, a painter, I don't know. I'm using this as an example. Look at their artwork. Have they tried to get their art into art shows? Are they selling their art? Just all kind of different things, and and it varies from person to person. But you can see how serious a person is based on how much money they're willing to invest and are they actually doing the work. And I know it's hard to say that I'm not about to buy into somebody's dream because it might work, it might not. But if they have the work ethic, if they have a plan, I believe it. you don't have to make $20,000 a month. But if you are making progress, I believe that's a good reason to stay behind the dream. So I wouldn't give up on someone because they have a dream and they aren't exactly where they want to be yet. So I know that could be challenging at times, but I believe that it's worth the sacrifice. We all we all are dealing with something. We all trying to build a dream or we're trying to become better as individuals. We're trying to become better husbands or wives. We are all striving to do something better. So I see nothing wrong with having a dream and aspiring to be everything that they feel that God has put in their heart. At least they have the heart to chase their dream. 37 years. I know it's been a long time. But again, great marriages aren't found. found. They are built. So my question to you is, are you willing to build with someone? Because I believe one of the keys to a successful long-term marriage is building together. I think it's easier to divorce when you already have all of your stuff together. They already have all their stuff together and then you come together. And then when adversity hit, it's easy to break apart because neither one of you really, and I'm throwing on my air quotes, really needed each other. I mean, because you already did everything on your own. But when you accomplish something together, I believe that builds deeper intimacy it creates a deeper bond because the the husband in an interview, he said this. I want to make sure I don't mess this up. He said women date from the waist down when it should be from the neck up. And when he said the neck up, he meant the mindset. How does this man think? Is he inquisitive? Is he willing to find some things out? Is he willing to work on some technology for whatever he's trying to do. Like as he's trying to grow a business because we live in a technology age. So he should have access to some things. He should be able to know a couple of things to do here and there. We got the internet. We have so many resources at our hand that I will want to know his mindset, the way he thinks. And then he said, women date from the waist down, meaning that most women are looking at a man's pocket. Hence why we're talking about this video. And I understand that women want to be provided and protected. But the thing is, are you willing to build with that person? That's what it boils down to. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of It's Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry people who desire to marry so much great content so make sure that you hit one of these videos it's somewhere around here but anyway go watch another video